Hey, it's Pete the Gadget Guy again. And in this next video, in the guide to buying a digital SLR, I'm going to take you on a quick tour of some of the latest functions you'll find on a DSLR camera. One of the biggest changes to DSLRs has been the addition of Live View. This is the ability to preview a shot on the camera's LCD screen before you press the shutter button, just as you would on a compact camera. A live view LCD is great for people who don't want to be limited to optical viewfinder composition and who enjoy taking photos from the hip, high up or at odd angles. The continuous image displayed on the LCD helps ensure that you're getting the composition right, even when your eye isn't pressed to the viewfinder. While it's true that even the cheapest digital compact cameras have had this feature for the past 15 years, there are good reasons why Live View hasn't been available in DSLRs until now. Basically, the design of today's digital SLRs evolved from film-based models, where the only way to see the scene through the lens was via an angled mirror. Now, the technology exists to show the camera's LCD exactly what appears on the sensor. Believe it or not, the solution was remarkably simple. Add a second image sensor that captures the path of light on its way to the optical viewfinder. It's the image formed on the second sensor that is displayed on the digital SLR's LCD screen. Compact cameras don't have the same problem. They were constructed so they had an optical viewfinder or you viewed the image off the primary sensor. Because there were no mirrors to handle the light path by the lens to the viewfinder, it was easy to make the migration from film-based compact camera to a digital one. It's worth noting that Live View also has its drawbacks. On some cameras, it works only when using manual focus. On cameras where it works with autofocus, there is a tendency for other functions to slow down considerably with the introduction of shutter lag when taking photos. A good rule of thumb with Live View is to limit its use to static scenes. Avoid using it for subjects in motion. A hot new accessory for DSLRs is a global positioning device. Some manufacturers are also indicating that they'll be building GPS functionality into their cameras in the near future. Sony already has some camcorders with a GPS chip built in, and there are now plenty of mobile phones on the market with what's known as AGPS or Assisted GPS. AGPS uses the 3G mobile phone network to provide the phone's coordinates. Nikon offers an accessory hot shoe mounted geotagging unit called the GP1, but this only works with Nikon cameras. So let me explain. Geotagging photos is essentially the process of saving the GPS coordinates of the location where a photo is snapped. This means that the latitude and longitude is then embedded into each picture's EXIF data. <laughs> Whoops, there's an acronym you may not have heard. EXIF stands for Exchangeable Image File. This is the camera function information, or more correctly, metadata, stored with each JPEG photo. Examples of stored EXIF information are shutter speed, date and time, focal length, exposure composition, metering pattern, and if a flash was used. This means that when photos are downloaded to your computer, each location you've taken a picture at can be plotted on a map. This is ideal for identifying exactly where you've been and when you were there. There are several software programs that will link the geotag photos to maps. An image website such as Flickr and Panoramio can plot your photo locations if you upload geotag photos. Applications like Google Earth will also plot your photo locations and allow you to share them with others. Now recently, digital camera manufacturers have been ramping up the ISO ratings on their models. This has made many photographers very happy, as it's a wonderful photographic tool to have at your disposal. If you're not familiar with what ISO is, let me explain. It indicates how sensitive a camera's image sensor is to light. Originally, it referred to the speed or sensitivity of different photographic films. 
Higher ISO or ASA numbers indicated film that was more sensitive to light. Now it's the same with digital cameras. The higher the ISO number, the more sensitive the camera's sensor is to light. The ISO numbers on digital SLRs follow the scale used with film cameras, namely 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600 and 3200. Increasing the ISO setting on your digital camera is most useful when you're taking photos in low light. When there's not a great deal of available light and your camera is in auto mode, it will slow down the shutter speed to capture a balanced exposure. However, a slow shutter speed means that the shutter stays open longer, giving the sensor plenty of time to gather light. Now the downside of lower shutter speeds is that when the shutter stays open for long periods of time, any motion is captured as a blur. Of course, you might suggest using a flash to add some light to the scene, but this is not always the optimal solution. So the answer is to increase the camera's sensitivity or ISO. That's the good news. There is a downside to using high ISO, and that's the generation of digital image noise, also known as grain. When a photo exhibits image noise, areas of colour that should look smooth and flat will have a mottled or speckled appearance. Image noise is easiest to see in areas of shadow and in large areas of consistent colour. With an ISO of 100, you'll be hard pressed to see any noise. Because the more you enlarge a digital image, the easier it is to see noise. Digital photographers who want to make large prints will keep the ISO as low as possible. At ISO 400, you might be able to see some grain in your photos, and at ISO 3200, it will definitely be visible. Your digital SLR tries to compensate for the noise by filtering it out so that the image doesn't look like a grainy mess. This is why you might still have a very hard time seeing image noise even at ISO 800 with some cameras. Both Canon and Nikon SLR cameras have been praised for their ability to keep high SO noise at a minimum, which gives photographers a lot of flexibility when shooting in low light. If low light photography is an important part of what you'll be using your digital camera for, then you should know that not all digital SLRs produce noise in the same way, and some are better at reducing it than others. Digital SLR cameras often provide a sensor dust removal system. These systems work by shaking the sensor very rapidly. The sensor is actually vibrating more than moving in order to remove any dust particles that may have landed on it. Additionally, many manufacturers now put anti-static coatings over their sensors. One last resort is that careful manual cleaning of the sensor can be required in order to remove dust. All you need is to buy the correct cleaning kit for your camera model. Now this is the end of part one. Part two delivers a look at some of the most recent developments in DSLR features and functionality.